Radio frequency energy harvesting is the process of extracting electromagnetic waves out of the air and using them to power electronic devices. This is done by using a rectifying antenna to take the wave out of the air and convert it into DC current, which is usable by the device. This is extremely useful, but it's not used today because the power harvested by a rectifying antenna doesn't generate enough electricity to power most modern devices. This is due to a phenomenon called Fries path loss, which is a relationship between the transmission and receiving antennas in the telecommunication system where the power loss of a transmitted electromagnetic wave increases the further away the receiving antenna is from the source. So idealistically, this would be able to power a electronic device, but the rectifying antenna or the receiving antenna would have to be very, very, very close to the source antenna, which isn't really how it works in use. Um, but the following example will explain that further. So a plane wave propagates through one square meter of free space with the magnetic component of this equation right here. A rectifying antenna receives the wave 50 meters away from its source. What is the magnitude of the power received? So from what we understand, we have a source which is giving this wave or this magnetic component and the once it gets to the receiving end, it's gonna be a lot less. So we'll see what happens. So the first step in this equation is to find the electric field component because these electromagnetic waves have both a electric and a magnetic component. So to find the electric field component, we can use a nifty relationship that happens in a lossless medium. Since we are in free space, like it says it right here, that is a lossless medium, so we can use the following relationship, where the phase domain of the electric field is equal to the um, wave impedance multiplied by the propagation direction of the wave and the cross product of the phasor domain of the magnetic component. So first we need to find the wave impedance, which in a lossless medium is going to just be free space. So that's going to be 377 because it's just the two universal constants over one another in the square root. The propagation direction is in the z direction, which is shown in the equation by the z being here. And we need the phase domain of the magnetic component. We were given the time domain, but you just need to do a transformation here. You change this cosine into a e, and you drop the, you suppress the time notation. So using this, we need to take the cross product of those two values we just found. And once we get that, we get the phase, or the phase domain of the electric field, which is this right here. However, we need to put it back in the time domain. So we do just that. We just do the reverse of what we did earlier with the magnetic field, and we get the time domain of the electric field component, which is in the x direction which is perpendicular to both the propagation direction and perpendicular to the magnetic component, which is what we know is correct. So the second step in this process is to calculate something called the RMS values of both our electric and magnetic components. RMS stands for root mean squared, and it's a approximate value of a sinusoidal frequency when we're thinking about DC voltage. Because in a sine wave, which is shown by, or cosine or sine, which is shown by our wave equation, it's, in, it's a cosine, the values will, will oscillate between one and negative one every period, or whatever it is. And since we're thinking about this in terms of DC voltage, once it goes through the rectifying antenna, it's going to be DC voltage. We want to think about it 
in a way where we think about DC voltage, not AC voltage. So one good way of approximating what DC equivalent would be in AC voltage is using a root mean square, where we um, you, just you just divide the peak voltage of the sinusoid by uh, the root two, and that gives you an approximation for 200 to the DC voltage as shown here. Probably was a pretty bad explanation, but it gets the job done. <laughs> so we do just that. We just divide each one by root two, and you can see that we have um, gotten rid of our sinusoids. We just have flat numbers, which is a lot better to work with than having cosines and sines. So our third step is to evaluate the pointing vector. It's probably not how you pronounce that, but it doesn't matter. The pointing vector is a expression of power density, which we're getting closer to what we need is power. It's power over the area. So that is equal to the uh, cross product of our two components, the electric and the magnetic components. And when we do that, we get this value here in watts over meters squared. However, we need the uh, just flat power. We just want watts, not watts over meters squared. So the next step is to find the transmitted power, which you basically just need to multiply that previous answer by the area, which in the problem description, we know that this going through one meter squared of free space, so that's our area. So we just multiply by one, what do you do? And we get that right here, the same answer. Now it's in watts instead of watts per meter squared. That's gonna be equal to our transmitted power, which that should be a T right there, not an R, whatever. So to get our received power from this transmitted power, we have to use the aforementioned freeze loss principle. I think it's principle. <laughs> um, using this equation right here. So basically what this says is the ratio to the received power and to the transmitted power is equal to this expression right here. These two right values right here are constants and they are called directivity. This is the directivity of the received antenna, and this is the directivity of the transmitted antenna. That basically means um, how directed their signals are. So if you had a directivity of one, that would mean that the directivity is, or the, power, the, the wave is directed equally across all directions. So you would just be looking at the rest of the equation which for this case we would have, since we're in free space and we really want to just look at how the distance affects it and stuff, these are going to end up being one, which we'll show that later. And then the rest of the equation is the wavelength over four pi times the distance, and that's going to be all squared. So let's use that. <clears throat> so like I said earlier, our directivities are both going to be one due to the free space. Um, our distance is 50 meters, which was also given in the um, problem description. And our frequency, or, or sorry, our wavelength is equal to the frequency over the speed of light, which is how fast our wave is moving. Uh, we don't have frequency, but we do have angular frequency given by this 40 pi right here. So to get angular frequency, you just do um, the yeah, you just do that. <laughs> um, you divide it by 2 pi, and that's what we get for the frequency. You divide the angular frequency by 2 pi. So then we also divide that by um, the speed of light, and we get this for our wavelength. That's a very small wavelength, but whatever. So the transmitted power that we got in the last step, which is the same, that watts. So we rearrange the equation a little, and we get our um, uh, received power is equal to the wavelength over four pi times the distance squared multiplied by the transmitted power. I took out the directivity constants because they're both one, so they don't matter. 
So you do that and you get a received power of a very, very, very small amount of power. That's times 10 to the negative 16. That's compared to this one, which is a magnitudes, magnitudes, magnitudes higher than the received power. So you can see that in the end, the power that's received from the transmitted wave is very, very, very low. And you won't be able to really power anything with this much power. And that's why we can't use this uh, application right now. However, people are still researching this. So eventually, there might be some breakthrough. And this may be commonplace. But as of now, um, you cannot use um, RFEH for a modern application. But it is cool. Uh, that's good.